let me ask you a question. Have you ever been to a carol service? Most of us have. Most people who've lived in the United Kingdom, been brought up in the United Kingdom, at one time or another, if we haven't been to a carol service, we walk past carol singers. And I think it's safe to say that a carol service is probably the least likely occasion where you will see riotous assembly, where you will see people get arrested or where people cause problems. After all, Christianity is the true religion of peace. There's another religion out there masquerading as the religion of peace. But if you read the text of the New Testament, you'll find out pretty quickly that Jesus was quite a peace-loving person. And he didn't go around fermenting riot or murder or mayhem. So I think it's safe to say a carol service is probably one of the more peaceful British traditions or European traditions or Western civilization traditions that we can say is a safe place, a nice place, a place that you come away from with a warm, fuzzy feeling. Well, on Sunday, um, I was invited to a carol service. And if I get invited to a carol service and I can attend, I will attend. I was invited by Christians from Speaker's Corner. Um, Atheist Steve from Speaker's Corner was promoting it. Um, Raj Singh actually took took part in and, and sang some of the carols. So it, it was, really was, to a great, in, uh, a great extent, a multicultural event, a carol service that everybody at Speaker's Corner embraced and got involved with. Strange thing about this carol service was, um, when I arrived at the Brexit demonstration on Sunday morning, I was bimbling about early in the morning, just having a look around the staging area and, and seeing what was going on. One of the police liaisons came up to me and said, uh, Richard, what's all this about a carol service at Speaker's Corner? I said, well, yeah, we're having a carol service. He said, well, you might get arrested for that. I said, what? He said, well, it's, it's breaking our restrictions on, on public assembly and, and you might get arrested. This is actually what he said to me. I said to him, well, I can't really do anything about that. I said, the, the carol service has been arranged. Um, I've promoted it on Facebook. I can't not go to a carol service that lots of other people are going to go to. I said, I've got to go. So if you have to arrest me, then you have to arrest me. But it's very, very strange. And I said, tell me this, how would it look on the front page of the Evening Standard that people going to a peaceful carol service at Speaker's Corner are arrested by baton-wielding, body-armour-clad, helmet-wearing police officers. It's not going to really look too good, and I'm sure the bosses at the Met are not going to be too happy with that outcome. Anyway, the, the dialogue went backwards and forwards, and I said, well, we're going to Speaker's Corner unless there's a, a massacre between um, 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock tonight in London we will be having our carol service at Speaker's Corner because it can't be cancelled. So we went, we had the carol service. It was peaceful as I knew it would be because I've never heard of a riot at a carol service. And everybody got into the festive spirit and left Speaker's Corner, I think, for about 6.30 in the evening. While I was at Speaker's Corner, I had a, an interesting little dialogue with a gentleman that we're all probably familiar with gentleman called Ali Dawa, and uh, Ali Dawa seems to want to come and speak at our events. So I went up to Ali, I said, Ali, what about coming to the carol service? I would like to cordially invite you to come and sing praises to God. You are a religious man. Let's, uh, let's worship God together. Of course, Ali turned me down very, very politely, very polite young man that he is. And uh, he said to me, he said, well, would you pray with me? I said, well, I don't pray with anyone, Ali. But I'd be, praying, I'd be praying to my God and you'd be praying to your God. So the dialogue went backwards and forwards and, and it was, it was good-humoured, it was light-hearted. And I, I, I walked away from meeting Ali Dawa and I thought, what a terrible tragedy Ali Dawa's life is. A nice, polite, intelligent young man who is zealous and passionate about what he believes, totally committed to his belief system. The, the tragedy is 
his belief system is completely false. His belief system is based on a lie. And that poor man is deceived. And in his deception, he's deceiving many other people. And you see, this is, gets to the crux of, of, of the reason for this video. I was threatened with arrest for going and exercising my right to freedom of expression, freedom of religious expression at Speaker's Corner. And the way things are going in the West, it's going to become more and more difficult to explain to young men like Ali Dawa, and Muhammad Hijab, and the other ideologues that go to Speaker's Corner and, and, and promote what is a blasphemous death cult. It's going to be even more difficult as time goes on to have these dialogues, not because of, of threat of murder from Muslim fanatics. That's ever present. And that's a, a law enforcement issue. And that's, a, that's for another day and maybe it's for another video. But because legislators throughout the world are trying to stop any criticism of Islam. And there's a reason for that. Because the power brokers in the Muslim world know that if an axe is put to the root of Islamic ideology, of Islamic scripture, of the life of Muhammad, of what's contained in the hadith, of the historicity of Muhammad, when an axe is put to the root of those religions, of that religion, sorry, publicly, the whole thing would crumble and collapse. And because the restriction on speaking openly about Islam is becoming more and more pervasive, it becomes more and more difficult for us to do this. And men like Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab remain trapped in that false system, that false ideology, that false belief. And the way to defeat Islam is not with bombs and bullets. It's with argument and reason and logic. And as the left and the Islamists and the liberal elite continue to close that down, it becomes more and more difficult to defeat the religion of peace. You see, the problem in the world is not men like Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa is not a violent man. The problem isn't men like Ali Dawa. The problem is what Ali Dawa believes. And we saw that during the week when a young man who'd been in prison, a criminal, a violent man, he was radicalized in prison. How does that happen? How can you have people in prison who are able to brainwash young violent men into getting involved in jihadism? Well, that's what's happened. This young man would have probably been a criminal. Maybe he would have never murdered anyone, or maybe he already had murdered people. We don't know anything about him. But we know this, that he got radicalised in prison. He started following that crazed death cult. And that ended in the murder of innocent people and in his own death. Now, if that ideology is not worth challenging, if we're not allowed to openly discuss what is wrong with that religion, there is something very, very wrong with Western society and Western civilization. We have surrendered our freedom of speech. We've surrendered our freedom of religion. And I just want to implore everybody, as long as you have breath, investigate Islam, challenge Islam, do your best to get the ax and put it to the root of Islam. And that means attacking the character of Muhammad, the false prophet, the murderer, the rapist, Attack his character. Attack their scripture. Attack the Hadith and the Quran. Attack Sharia law. But never, never attack the person. This is an ideological fight that we're fighting. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against the powers and principalities. The spiritual wickedness that has allowed that religion to flourish for 1400 years. But in our day, our day of, of enlightenment, our day of information, we have the information, we have the tools to once and for all consign that death cult to the trash can of history. And that's my prayer this Christmas, that Islam will start to collapse on a massive basis 
as Muslims realize that they have been deceived, they have been lied to, and how angry would that make you? I've got many friends who are ex-Muslims who've come out of the death cult. And I would say to Ali Dawa, if you ever get to see in this video, leave Islam, leave it, flee from it. It's gonna destroy you eventually. I believe it's the most evil, malevolent force on the planet today. So yeah, the moral of the story is, if the police threaten to arrest you for going to a carol service, go anyway. And while you're on the way, try and invite as many Muslims to come with you to that carol service as you possibly can, because they need to hear about true religion, the true religion of peace, not their false religion of death. Have a great Christmas.